Morning there, brother. Uh, allow me to just take a take a sip of my coffee. Uh, the more I the more I think about this uh, this story of the disciples, the more I think it's just uh, settled in my heart and mind that at the end of their journey there as far as Christ's earthly ministry goes and the Gospels record I don't think there in John they were in hiding I think they were just taking a little breather uh, these these gentlemen had had gone through three years of of uh, intense training one-on-one -on -one with the master uh, they they'd seen all the miracles they they witnessed uh, the healings uh, they saw and heard the preaching they beheld him as of the face of the only begotten of the son full of grace and truth for a moment they went fishing now, uh, I think guys well for two and a half to three years the whole journey it was with the church there in Toronto I think I went through a, a training I witnessed the miracles, the healings, the one-on-one -on -one ministering from Christ, all the highs, the lows, the the uh, joys, the sorrows that that came with the ministry. And now I'm in this uh, this break, this 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 little rest. Now, as we know quite well, the disciples soon after. They still encounter Jesus in Galilee as he promised and um, and he'll uh, give them another another promise to wait for the coming of the Spirit you know I can't help but feel connected with this history certainly the disciples were apt to go back to their old job I wonder if they're a little rusty. Uh, sometimes I feel a little rusty. <laughs> when you're in um, in the labors week in and week out, um, when people are counting on you to bring a message or two, you have to be studied and prepared. It costs you more if you don't. If you aren't so there's an accountability there and to be honest when you go back to fishing <laughs> um, there's a little less accountability towards men of course uh, there's no expectation that I'll have a message prepared on Sunday but I've assumed a passive role there's no uh, there's no no real demand that I that I study and prepare messages, but uh, I should I should do those things. Certainly, I'm accountable before my Lord. <clears throat> but I'm for a time fishing. I'm for a time waiting. You've uh, said before to me that I'm in this uh, long-suffering phase, and, and I, I really have need of of uh, growth in the long-suffering era area, and I'm feeling um, pressure in the long-suffering area. Um, you know, you can't you can't build muscle without without putting some some opposing force, some op opposi 
opposing pressure upon that muscle and exerting it um, so that it gets broken down a little bit and then can build up stronger. I think the same is true with our uh, our fruits of this spiritual walk. I believe you've come to the conclusion that it comes in order. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. If that's the case, and uh, after the Lord grows me in long-suffering, I go on to gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance. Against such there is no lie. I rejoice and look forward to that. For now, long-suffering and waiting patiently seems to be my calling. Now, it's interesting to note that when you're when you're there in those times of uh, fishing, doing what you know to do, waiting on the Lord, if He promised you to come meet you there, He'll meet you there. And He does in exactly what you're doing, though it may be a mundane daily task, or it may be, uh, it may be a, a new thing of the day that comes upon you. But as you're going about your labors, Christ meets you there. And he does so with the intent to teach you something. To provoke you and, and to prove you. Now, I think that when the disciples were fishing and Jesus was there on the shore, an interesting, uh, an interesting point came up just in passing. <laughs> I, I kind of wished it was developed more. It was that when we're out there waiting for the promise of his coming from to arrive to our Galilee perhaps from the waters looking onto the shore it was a little foggy it was a little hazy it was difficult to see but we have to remind ourselves and remember to trust that Jesus always sees perfectly clearly as we may be standing on a ship looking back at the Lord on the shore, or at least his silhouette, if I imagine correctly, that there's a there's a fog or a mist that would have come through as they had been laboring all the night. So the morning had arrived. That early morning fog is across and they don't see clearly that it's the Lord there standing there perhaps at first. Even so, I don't see clearly in my day to day that, that the Lord's there waiting, watching. But the Lord always has crystal clear vision of us, where our hearts are at, what we're focused upon. And He knows exactly what we need in those moments where it's not so clear to us. With perfect clarity, He speaks and says, cast it on the other side. And when we see that great fruit, Say it's the Lord. He knew what we needed to see or experience in order to realize that He was there. Come on out there, little fly. The Lord knew exactly what they needed to see and to hear from Him in order that they would know, oh, it's the Lord, He's come. They toiled all through the night, caught nothing. Experienced fishermen, they knew well the water. They knew the boat, they knew the ship. They knew the work. They're doing their job right, correctly. But then Jesus speaks, they obey, and immediate abundance is found there. I believe that's what's going to happen ultimately in my waiting period. I'm going to wait. I'm going to do what I know to do. I'm going to preach when I can preach. I'm going to witness when I can witness. I'm going to love and, and care for others when I can love and care for others. 
first and foremost, on an earthly speaking, I'm gonna minister to my family. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with the boys, love my wife. I'm gonna serve in a church. It may come a point where I've toiled all through the night. I still can't see clearly for that morning fog and the Lord's going to give me instructions. When that fruitful harvest comes, ha, it is the Lord. I'm jumping ship and swimming to Him. <laughs> I think uh, the potential definitely is there if I don't remind myself. To let uh, you know, pride in me well up. I have in my mind where I picture my ministry being and going. And when it's not there, I'm going to ask, "Why, Lord? This isn't clear. This, this is confusing. This is foggy. What, what is happening here? I've been waiting all this time. I've been long suffering. Haven't I long suffered enough?" As humans, we have this amazing ability to assume God runs on the same 24-hour clock we do. And we expect and hope that He would meet a deadline. We expect and hope not only that, that we'd see a certain amount of gain. We've been toiling all through the night and we have no fishes. I've been the experienced fisherman, the one that is fishing with love, fishing with joy, experiencing the mundane of his daily grind with peace and in peace and now is proven with long suffering is provoked with long suffering uh, the experienced fisherman will will use the love and the joy and the peace that he has learned and experienced and grown in to date to face that long suffering and go through it And I had not presumed that gain is godliness. I also not presume that looking around, my ministry is now nil and nothing. Because God is there working. His will is being performed in me. He's the one that worketh in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So he hasn't put me on a shelf, but he's given me a little time to go and work in some other things. A little space of grace, as it were. Three years of toil and growth and learning and experiencing and walking in love, joy, peace. And now I think for the first time I'm standing in long suffering. If I'm not careful, I'll miss the voice of God, the opportunity to walk in obedience, and ultimately I'll miss the abundant harvest that He has for me when I do obey. I don't want to miss that abundant harvest, and I certainly don't want to miss that seaside meal with my Savior. And so I'll long suffer, I'll wait. See, we have need of patience. It's written in Peter, we have need of patience. And after we have suffered a while, we'll receive the promise. <laughs> we, we need that. I need that. Everything can't be automatic. If it is, there's no growth in patience. There's no growth in long-suffering. If there's no growth in long-suffering, then I can't go on into gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance, 
I can't truly go on unto perfection, which is where God is taking me. I know according to the scriptures, I am perfect in Christ. I'm also being perfected in Christ. James admonishes us to let patience have her perfect work. Let patience completely work out her end in us. We need to do that. See, our problem is, is that in our ignorance and our unbelief, we miss out on these opportunities of growth in the areas of things like long suffering things that aren't so fun or joyous or experiential but our problem is is that when we're not rejoicing in the long suffering our problem is that it's only due to the fact we haven't acknowledged the fact that that joy needs to come with us and can come with us. Love, joy, peace enters with us into that long suffering. No. Go about your day. Do the work that God has for you. Do what you know to do. Be the best at whatever you're doing that day in the moment. In the power of God. And all the while, make way for God. Yield to Him. Give Him place. Give Him space. Give Him opportunity to do His work. Remember, just because we don't see clearly, it doesn't mean that any wool's been pulled over the Lord's eyes. But God, help us to rest in your rest. God, help us to love in your love. God, help us to rejoice in your joy. And we could have and let patience have her perfect work. See, as I said before, when, when it doesn't happen in our time, we get, we get to fretting, don't we? We get concerned. We're on that ship and we're like, it's been, it's been all through the night. We've been toiling, we've been rowing, we've been fishing, we've been casting, we've been drawing, we've been casting, we've been drawing and nothing is happening. Did the Lord forget us? Did He forget our the promise He made to us? Did I mess it up? Did He leave me? Did He forsake me? We do this again because we put God in our box. We bring God down to our time. We bring God down to our 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 framework of, of time and space and matter. We bring God down to something tangible, something um, philosophical, something scientific. God can't be put in any of those frameworks. We take God and we grave Him into an image. We draw a circle and put three circles around it. And we say, is God, is God, is God, is not, is not, is not. Ah, there's a perfect pictorial of my Lord. Even though the Bible clearly condemns making such images.
No, we need to exhibit true faith towards our Lord. And stop trying to confine Him. Stop trying to make it so that He must think like we think. And He must do as we do when we would do it. I believe, and I've read this statement recently, that the true faith recognizes the need of time to grow us in any grace of God. We need to understand that while we may be sitting here thinking nothing's happening in a, a certain area where we expect growth. While we're here toiling and fishing and casting and doing our labors in the fog, the Lord has an expected end for us. He's already prepared the fire where he's going to cook our wonderful harvest. He's already prepared the end result of the labor that hasn't even reached its climax. The catch. In other words, the final reward is already being meticulously wrought. Our ultimate perfection, completeness in Christ is there waiting for us. Though for now, we are being perfected in some things. What a great truth that is. Christ has the home fire burning, waiting for our harvest we haven't even brought in yet. We have need of patience. There's a promise there, but we have to suffer a little while. For a guy like me, that means so much. God's truly worked in me a desire to, to reach people with the word. The desire to be used of God. That my voice would thunder out in touch the hearts of many, that I could exhort and convince gainsayers, that I could rebuke, reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, that I could minister grace to the hearers, that I could be an aid in the moving of the Spirit. To draw men to all truth. To bring my family through that. To know that I'm over here toiling and rowing and working in what I know to work and doing what I know to do in the fog. To be able to see through the eyes of faith my Savior. On the shore. In that promised land where he said he would be. With the fire prepared. To welcome me with a great harvest. 
That means so much to me. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. What a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. Oh. We have need of patience. We need to let patience have her perfect work. We need to trust she is. We need to yield to God. We need to make way for him. We need to give him space and place to do his work and rest in that. I want to trust him with great adoration and give him the time he needs give him all that I have to give him that is of any value and that's my faith I want to rest in the Lord and for a while after the training days before I head into a fruitful and <laughs> probably frantic ministry. I just want to rest and wait in the love that he's worked in me, the joy that he's worked in me, and the peace that he gives and works in me. I want to be content there. I hope this ministers to your heart, brother. And the Lord teaches you the same. What a great place this is for a child of God to be. Just waiting on him. Have a great and blessed day. I know you will. Amen.